Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the subclavian artery. The, we have left subclavian artery and right subclavian artery. Left subclavian artery. And right subclavian artery. The left subclavian artery is a branch of the arch of the aorta. This is arch of aorta. This is the left subclavian artery and this is the right subclavian artery is this this is the right subclavian artery and right subclavian artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk this is the brachiocephalic trunk okay the brachiocephalic trunk again is a branch of the arch of the aorta, first branch of the arch of the aorta. So, left subclavian artery is a direct branch of the arch of the aorta, right subclavian artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk. Brachiocephalic trunk has two divisions one is the right common carotid artery, another is the right subclavian artery. This is the left common carotid artery, branch of the arch of the aorta. Okay, we got that. Now, we go through the branches of the arch of the aorta and I will demonstrate the branches from the right side, right subclavian artery. Branches will be same on the left side. Here, I am demonstrating the branches from the right subclavian artery. So, we go to the branches of the subclavian artery. Okay. The subclavian artery is divided into three parts by the scalene anterior muscle. This is the scalene anterior muscle. Scalene anterior muscle. This is the first part which is medial to the scalene anterior. What is behind the scalene anterior? This is the second part. What is lateral to the scalene anterior? That is the third part of the third part of the subclavian artery. Okay. So this will also be, it will be the same in case of left subclavian artery. So, the part of the subclavian artery medial to the scalene anterior is the first part. The part behind the scalene anterior, that is second part. The part lateral to the scalene anterior, that is the third part. Most of our branches come out of the first part of the subclavian artery. Now, we we'll go to the branches. Okay. Branches. How can I remember the branches? We have a lot of mnemonic in the in, among the medical students. One is very easy to remember. Bit C D. Vitamin C and D. Okay. So number one is the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. Okay. This is number one vertebral artery. Okay, then internal thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery. That is also called internal mammary artery. Internal thoracic artery. Then if you go to this is I, D I T, that is the then we we'll get the thyrocervical trunk, thyrocervical trunk, thyro 
cervical trunk. Okay. So you got T. Then we get the costo cervical trunk. Costo cervical trunk. Okay. Then we get the dorsal scapula that is variable. Its origin is variable. Dorsal scapular artery. Okay, we got the major branches. If you remember the vitamin C and D, then we get this is from the other YouTuber. I respect them very much, and also the medical students. Vit C D vitamin C D vertebral artery. Internal thoracic artery is also called internal mammary artery. Thyrocervical trunk, costo cervical trunk, trunk and dorsal scapular artery. Vertebral artery, this is the vertebral artery, okay, vertebral artery, this will go through the transverse foramen or foramen transversarium of C6, C5, C4, C3, C2 and C1 cervical vertebra. It will go through the foramen magnum and at the base of the pons, two vertebral artery will unite to form basal artery and that will contribute in the formation of circle of willis okay that is that in internal thoracic artery this is the internal thoracic artery and this artery will go down just lateral to the sternum behind the sternoclavicular joint okay then it will be divided into two one is the superior epigastric artery another one this is the superior epigastric superior epigastric and this is the musculophrenic musculophrenic artery phrenic artery okay so it also provide a lot of other branches like that of the like that of the intercostal arteries pericardiacophrenic arteries okay this is the branches of the internal thoracic artery this is coming out from the first part of the subclavian artery, lower border. Okay, we got the internal thoracic artery. Then we'll go to the thyrocervical trunk. That is important to us. Thyrocervical trunk. Okay, so this is the thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical. And this from thyrocervical trunk will get the inferior thyroid artery. We get inferior thyroid artery. Okay. And we we'll get the transverse transverse cervical artery transverse cervical artery and we'll also get the suprascapular artery okay and from the inferior third artery we may get ascending cervical artery from here we'll get this will go to the thyroid gland. In the third artery, it also gives one branch called ascending cervical artery. Ascending cervical artery. One branch of the inferior third artery. Okay, we got the branches from the thyrocervical trunk. Again, inferior third artery. The ascending cervical branch of the inferior third artery transverse cervical artery and the suprascapular artery we got the branches now we go to the branches from the costo cervical trunk okay branches from the costo cervical trunk okay. this is the costo cervical trunk this is the branches of the costo cervical trunk branches of the costo cervical 
trunk. What are the branches? We have the deep cervical artery that will ascend the deep cervical artery and it will anastomose with the descending branch of the occipital artery. Deep cervical artery. Okay, this is one. Another one is the another branch that is the the supreme intercostal artery. Supreme intercostal artery. Supreme intercostal artery. It will provide the upper posterior intercostal arteries. It will come from here. Supreme intercostal arteries. Okay, we got that. Now, the, how about the transverse cervical artery? Transverse cervical artery is this is what? This is the inferior thyroid. Inferior thyroid. Thyroid artery. This is the ascending cervical artery. Ascending cervical artery. Okay. This is the transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery. Okay. We go there. What are the branches of the transverse cervical artery? This will give rise to two branches. One is the superficial cervical artery, and another is the dorsal scapular artery. Superficial cervical artery, small artery, and another one is the dorsal scapular artery. Scapular artery. Okay. We got the branches. This is the. This is the. This is the. Transverse cervical artery and transverse cervical artery has two branches, superficial cervical, and this one is the dorsal scapular artery here. Okay, we got A and B here. Okay, so we got the this is the suprascapular artery. Okay, suprascapular artery. This is costo cervical trunk. It has two branches. One is the one is the one is the supreme intracostal artery here. Another one is the deep cervical artery. So we got the branches of the of the subclavian artery. Again, we'll summarize. We'll remember vitamin C D, vertebral artery, internal thoracic artery. Then the thyrocervical trunk, costo cervical trunk, and dorsal scapular artery. It is variable. Dorsal scapular artery may be a branch of the transverse cervical artery, or dorsal scapular artery may come out of the third part of the subclavian artery or second part of the subclavian artery independently. Okay. Regarding the costo cervical trunk, this is the costo cervical trunk is here this costo cervical trunk okay so this may be from the first part of the of the subclavian artery on the left side maybe from the second part that is behind the skeleton anterior muscle in in, in the right subclavian artery okay we got the branches now we we'll learn some of the clinical anatomy okay for subclavian artery, this is very important to us. So, clinical anatomy. Okay. We have to know that subclavian artery continued as the on the outer rib of the first rib, it becomes the axillary artery. Okay. So, subclavian artery. If you remember that. Subclavian artery continues as 
axillary artery at the outer border of the first three. Okay, you can remember that. And this may be compressed to stop hemorrhage. Okay, so third part may be compressed by the physician to stop hemorrhage. To stop hemorrhage is one and another clinical importance is that the subclavian artery may be compressed in cervical rib in cervical rib in the presence of cervical rib someone it may be symptomatic someone may be asymptomatic in the presence of cervical ribs rib okay the subclavian artery may be compressed subclavian artery may be compressed and that may lead to and causes and may cause and may cause thoracic outlet syndrome okay so we can stop hemorrhage or it may be the site of compression by the cervical lip that may lead to thoracic outlet syndrome so that's all about the anatomy of the subclavian artery its branches and also the clinical anatomy if you like my video please subscribe my channel support my channel and share the information with your friends any question please feel free to ask me and have a nice day bye now